Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Nanofly 16 from Sub250, a new company in FPV. On the Nanofly 16 are 0803, 19,000 kV motors, and on those motors are HQ 40mm biobladed props. The FPV camera is the Caddx Ant. The only one flight controller that I have here is the Express LRS Edition. It is a 5 amp ESC. Of course, it does have an OSD chip on there as well. And the VTX, as part of that all in one, goes up to 250 milliwatts via smart audio. And the VTX antenna is right there. It's on a micro UFL. And something else that impressed me about this board was the size of the pads. They're still very close together, but they're fairly lengthy, so soldering could be an option if this board becomes available separately. The Nanofly only comes in one other version, and that is with a TBS Crossfire. You can get it with batteries, uh, possibly two, but uh, due to a shipping mishap, I didn't get any of their batteries. Battery connector that it does come with is the GNB 27. It does come in this nicely printed case, but it doesn't really shut when you have the battery tray attached to the carbon fiber frame. So it's not much of a carrying case. In the box, we get a few extra nylon nuts, some super small screws, and a hex driver. Little tiny screwdriver for your Phillips screws. Extra set of HQ 40 millimeter props. A prop direction card and stickers. It weighs just under 29 and a half grams. Beans, I didn't have the batteries that they're gonna ship it with, which are 380 milliamp batteries. I have 380s, but they all have PH20 connectors. I use this Nitro Nectar 300 milliamp 1S battery. Very good performing battery. More on battery details during the flight. And with that battery, our flying weight becomes a little over 38 and a half grams. Carbon fiber looks to be one and a half millimeters thick. And motor post to motor post looks like 77 millimeters. Relatively calm evening we have here. Uh, so the sun's going to be kind of low. So we're going to get the sun kind of in our FPV camera when we fly uh, back to the, what we're calling the cabana side or cabana, depending upon how you want to pronounce it, side of the yard. That's the yard with the new construction, the outdoor cook space, that stuff. So we're going to get that. There it is. Sun just right in our eye there a little bit. Uh, now, all the materials, or at least the materials I've seen on their website, kind of position this as an inside flyer. So I am going to fly it inside, but I don't recommend it. It's a one-time thing, and I'm flying in a house, and I'm actually fairly nervous about, you know, nicking a cushion or a, a bit of the couch or furniture, and it ended up with a little tear or even just a, a thread that pops loose and becomes... Uh, kind of like that Weezer song about uh, pull the thread on your sweater. But at any rate, so we're going to start out with the outside flight. Again, these Newbie Drone Nitro Nectar batteries are very important to the flight time that you're seeing in front of you. Uh, again, I cannot tell you what you'll get out of the batteries that they ship with. They're 380s. I suspect they're made by GNB because there's just not that many companies making 380s, but I could always be wrong. Uh, I did try the Emacs batteries, the 300s that are made by GNB, and I got about 220 to 230 on those. I tried the 350s from GNB, and I got like a minute 40 if you kind of allowed the annoying uh, low battery voltage uh, to get at you. And the 450s don't really fit in the battery holder, so you're, you're kind of in that odd middle ground. And quite frankly, the Nitro Nectars are a little bit thick, so they bow the uh, battery holder just a touch. Uh, speaking of batteries, I know that getting the, the Nitro Nectar Golds are going to be a little bit of a challenge. So, uh, you know, maybe this review doesn't help you too much when it comes to battery life. I've got to sh share with you my experience, and I did adjust the battery low voltage. I put it down to uh, 3.4 volts per cell. So we'll see that pop up from time to time, and then go away as we back off the throttle, and it comes up above 3.4 volts. Also, at the end of this flight, for some reason, I got the hankering to do some close proximity. So then after this flight, I don't know if it was the next flight or several flights after that, but on this same evening, I did some close proximity, which all I thought was kind of fun. So I thought I would just include that in kind of a picture-in-picture -picture, uh, back at the desk, you know, something interesting to watch while we, we talk about the quad, some of the, the details in my experience with the quad. Uh, so obviously there's a new company and with a name like sub 250 uh yeah that uh, dive i don't know what i was doing <laughs> disregard all of that <laughs> that was just me having a little bit of fun but uh sub 250 they've got to have a hankering for uh small quads micro quads so i'm interested to see in what they'll be coming forward in the future uh, but this one is uh, the first one from them, so it's an interesting thing. They've been teasing it a lot on Facebook, so now we finally get to uh, show the video and the flight footage, and I'm sure there'll be other releases or of uh, review videos. So go out there and watch and do your homework and do your research, 
and uh, then decide what you think of it. And if it fits your uh, liking, there'll be links down in the video description. Uh, the flight has ended and we've got three minutes and 12 seconds, but my battery is a touch low. I probably went five to 10 seconds too long, but three minutes is about what I got on most of my flights. Okay, this is my inside flight. I don't recommend this. Um, I know that they show it a lot as a, an indoor flyer. Uh, there are advantages to being indoor. You don't have to put up with the wind and the weather, but this is not prop protected, so I am fairly nervous, and right off the bat, we are going to see a crash as I come around my first island turn. Yeah, got a little wide, a little hesitant, and uh, ended up uh, going down. I did turtle mode this thing a number of times, inside and outside, but not in the grass when the props absolutely couldn't spin. So if I crashed and I came down on some of that cement uh, around some of the new construction or around the pool, then I would use turtle mode and all worked out well. One of the reasons that I was worried about that is, you know, oftentimes with 5 amp ESCs on these little micros, we can sometimes blow an ESC if we turtle mode and the props can't spin real easily. Uh, so when the props can spin, I do want to use turtle mode to test that out. The motors are an interesting bit. They look like unibells to me, which are a good thing. Uh, also, I'm a bit concerned the fact that it's unprop protected and it's one millimeter motor shafts. But, you know, I crashed a number of times, but if you're flying in a concrete jungle and you're flying fast and hard, that should be something to think about, but we do have bi blades. I think you're probably going to experience more uh, motor shaft bends or the possibility of those if you're running tri-blades or more. I think on bi-blades the prop uh, has enough freedom to where it can get out of the way so that you don't have that uh, that impact point going directly against the stem. So if you change to tri-blades be aware that uh, crashing may result in bent or broken motor shafts. Another thing about the 803s, in my experience on, on 0803s, they usually have a big lump of thrust in them in the throttle curve somewhere. I found these to be very linear, which was refreshing. So I didn't have to kind of really adjust. I have flown quads on 0803s in the house and I had a very difficult time uh, kind of maintaining my altitude. I would end up ballooning up a lot because they oftentimes would have this big lump of thrust right at about that flying throttle position. So again, I just want to reiterate, you know, if you uh, share space with others and they're in the area and you have a house like this with furniture and soft targets and soft uh, furniture all over the place, I don't recommend flying without prop guards inside. It just, it gives me unease. I haven't experienced much damage myself as much as I've flown inside, but uh, yeah. So I'm not going, you know, all out like I typically do or even as fast as I might normally uh, in videos or even casually when I'm just having fun in the house. So I'm a little bit hesitant, trying to be careful. Don't want to ding up the door frames and don't want to ruin any furniture or, you know, make a cut or anything like that. I think it's more suited for indoor space for larger industrial indoor spaces, uh, big offices or gymnasiums or warehouses or, you know, things like that. Structures that are larger and that they don't have as many um, damageable, if that's a word, sort of uh, items inside of them. But I did think I should fly it at least one time inside, so I gave it one battery, and this is what we have. Come here and here at the end of the flight, 305, and our battery is voltage is in good shape, coming up above 3.5 volts per cell, almost 3.6 volts per cell. So I mentioned it, uh, these will kind of bow, but they stay in there real nice. That's why I decided to fly them. So see how it kind of curves the bottom part of your tray. And even though it kind of still sits flat with this pigtail out here, that's a disadvantage to it. We're not really testing that. It kind of still sits flat, but it's not perfectly flat because we've got that little bow in there. Again, to restate the battery life, these Emacs batteries very likely made by GNB. I got about two minutes and 20 seconds to two minutes and 30 seconds of outdoor flight. Didn't fly them inside. I only flew one GN or uh, Nitro Nectar inside. The 350s, which are supposed to be larger as far as the milliamps, I got a lot less flight time. Um, minute 40 is about what I was able to muster. And then when you would disarm, the battery would come way up. So that's a pretty curious result in my opinion. And what else is interesting is the 350 on top there is smaller than the 300. Now maybe it's thicker. Hmm. Not much. I guess I could get the calipers out, but 
So in my experience with this 350 isn't that they, they don't do very good. Hopefully the 380s that they ship with are larger than the 300s, not only in printed milliamp hours, but also physical size so that it will help get you the flight time that you want. They have the option of ordering it with two batteries. Um, you don't have to, but you can. Uh, just know that these will fit, but this one will give you the flight time that I reported. Uh, as far as putting a 450 in there, I suspect it's going to come up. You know, it, you know, it's a 3D printed tray, so we could probably squeeze it in there, and I don't want to ruin it trying. You know, I don't want to tear it apart. It's I don't know how easy that is to see, but it's real close to going in there. So, yeah, you could probably do that and get away with it. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about adding this much weight and the flight characteristics and how it would impact that. But, you know, you're free will. You can fly whatever size. But if you go with uh, the thicker brands of these, like the Xylos are thicker than these. Well, these are from Flywoo, and I suspect they're not actually made by Flywoo. Um, but these Zilo, Xylo batteries are thicker. Uh, these would likely tear it apart or at least increase the probability. So that's my spiel about batteries. Hopefully you've been watching the uh, close proximity. And I'll play some crashes after the close proximity as well. Uh, so I mentioned a little bit of the risk about the prop protection. Now, I did shove these down as far as I could get them without drilling them out. And you can see I've got, you know, probably two millimeters right down there. My preference, because this is on prop protected, is that these props got all the way down to the bell. That gives us a little bit better of a chance that we won't be bending a shaft in those crashes. But with by blades, you know, when you hit the prop, it's likely to spin. So you're not likely to get a lot of force from the prop to the shaft because it should just move out of the way. And then you end up hitting either the carbon fiber that sticks out slightly from the motor or you hit the motor itself. Of course, my crashes were glancing blows off of trees. I didn't have anything too dramatic. Uh, during the close proximity, I kind of wang some things up front here, and you can see I've got some grass stains on my props and on my canopy. Uh, they do use motor connectors on here, as you could probably tell from the quick specs. This is our Cube antenna for Express LRS. We've got our boot button for the flight controller, so if you were need to go into DFU mode manually, our USB port has clearance all the way around it. That's something that I oftentimes think about when we're crashing and the, the whole aisle the whole all-in-one shifts a touch that if it's right up against the carbon or it's you know razor close to being that that USB port could potentially take some of that damage. We can see from our mounting in the motors we've got Phillips heads and then everywhere else we've got hex heads and they do stick out just a touch. Uh, we've got some nice routing with the motors. I presume those connectors will just fit right through that slot and they're cut to what looks to be just about the right size uh, for that connector so you don't have a lot of excess out of there. A nice little screen printing of Sub 250 and their logo. I think their logo goes this way actually though. So, And then we've got a sticker that stayed on through all my flights. The quality control sticker there as well. I did go around the motors when I first got it and tightened things up. They weren't loose, but it's just something that I always do when it, specifically when it comes to motors is just kind of check them and give them, you know, I'd, I'd say it wasn't even a quarter turn that I gave each screw. Just a touch. Don't want to get heavy handed with it, but I do want to make sure that they're, uh, it's going to stay on there tight. I don't want it to get uh, needlessly broken. And then, of course, you always want to check your canopies to make sure they're not sloppy loose. This one feels a little bit loose in the back end. There's just It's just sitting on top of this rubber grommet, so it's not real firm. This looks like a battery tray. That could be for the Crossfire receiver because it doesn't really fit any 1S battery. I actually tried because I was interested in flying it that way. That That's, you know, something interesting to me. You know, we run... I don't know how viable it is because if you had your battery sticking out this way and then the battery has a lead out and you connect it down here, it has got to stay out of the prop. So I think that is for the receiver for the TBS or Crossfire version. I suspect they're sending Crossfire. For all I know, they're sending a different uh, version of a, a TBS receiver. It only comes in two different editions, at least on the Sub250 website. Uh, Express LRS and uh, TBS uh, or Crossfire. We don't have any camera adjustment, and I do think from their print that they could work that in. Uh, I just don't know how viable that is. It does, uh, you know, one one thing about the the not having a camera adjustment is the canopies look a little cleaner and a little nicer.
but I also think we could probably drop maybe a gram with a slightly different design. Uh, you know, if you get the Express LRS edition, maybe you want to go in there and clip out what is that receiver holder. Maybe you want to shave down uh, a little bit of this antenna holder. Maybe you want to shave this off the back, you know, just get those extra grams. Maybe you want to take this off and just use the rubber band technique in order to hold your batteries on. Um, saving grams, getting longer flight time, getting more performance. Um, but I don't blame them for having this necessarily designed, but I would prefer to have adjustable camera angle. I think that fits more individuals, and we're all individuals as you know, RC enthusiasts or FPV enthusiasts, that some people will want a greater camera angle and some people will want a lower camera angle. But this is what we have in this particular case. At no time did the camera come out, and I suspect... I can't really see how it's clipped in there. I suspect it's this uh, lens housing that's holding it in. And I, especially when I was doing close proximity, I bonked this a number of times somewhere in this front area. So uh, the camera didn't take any damage. You can see it's kind of flush. So if you do hit something going fast, you know, the camera is kind of out front. And if it's a pole or something pointed, you know, there is potential for that. But there's not a lot we can do with these micro cameras in the super wide field of view. The super wide field of view gives us some opportunity to fly faster, even with a fixed camera angle, uh, because we have such a, a wide field of view that we can get the nose down and still see our horizon when we're looking in the top section of our goggles. Or we can fly a little bit slower because we can look a little bit lower in our goggles and use that horizon as well. Overall, a good, fun experience on this quad. It was cleanly built. I didn't really have any complaints. I obviously didn't have any durability issues. I didn't have any flight characteristics. Uh, you know, I had that one dive that I don't know what I was doing, but I just... I punched up and then I started coming down. And I kind of flattened out. That's user error. I think the PID tune could use a touch more uh, work to it. There's a little bit of a warble or bobble every once in a while in some of the harder at speed turns that you could kind of hear and possibly see in the DVR recordings that I've showed you. Uh, but really, overall, you know, pretty decent tune. If it were my tune, would I change it? Probably not. But if you don't know me, I, I don't get super fussy about my tunes. Usually what I do is I adjust how I fly my throttle management to the tune. There are many of you that are much better at tuning than I am anymore. I have gotten kind of away, specifically with the Betaflight sliders. Uh, but I'm going to try to dive back into that yet. I'd hope to be a little bit deeper into it yet this summer, but I just haven't had the time with all the projects in the backyard. So this is the Nanofly 16 from Sub250, and we need to take a look at the price according to their website. Uh, depending upon whether you get it with a battery or without a battery, without a battery, it is $149.99 according to their website, and with two batteries, it's $156.99. So only $7 more and you get two batteries might be worth it. Uh, if I pop over to the TBS version without batteries, it is $169.99. So more expensive than the Express LRS editions. And of course, if you do over the TBS Nano RX with two batteries, it's $176.99. So something to think about there, of course. Uh, you, you could bind this at a number of different shops. I've seen it at least at two or three shops so far. I don't think any have reached uh, in the U.S. or in the U.K., at least not that I have found. Uh, so you might be looking at just having to buy from either Sub250 Direct on their website or from Banggood. Uh, if you purchase from Banggood, I've got a coupon down in the video description next to the link that will save you some money. I think it's 5 to 8%. I'll put that text next to the coupon. i save you a little bit of cash, so maybe you can uh, afford to get some extra props or an extra battery. Or you can get something like the Vifly Whoop Store. Uh, this little guy. I'm here, sorry, it's a mess. I've been using this thing a lot. I set it right here on the side of my desk and I just charge and storage charge my batteries. Uh, the only, to my knowledge, charger that does storage charging natively with 1S. So, if you fly 1S, I think this is a product that you need to have. As always, links down in the video description. Some will be affiliate links, some will not. I just kind of put up whatever store I can find stuff at and you vote with your dollar on what store you want to support. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.